So good morning, brothers and sisters and friends. Good morning, brother. Welcome to this morning's service as we gather together to celebrate the resurrection from the dead and offer praise to a gracious and glorious God who is holy and righteous. I want to share a story. You know, sometimes we walk through our life and... Um, the closer we walk with the Lord, we have opportunities to serve the Lord. And this week, um, I had someone come to me for counsel. And in case anyone doesn't know, I'm going through college classes right now for biblical counseling. And I say this as a way of encouragement. If you need someone to talk to, you can talk to pastor or myself. But it struck me as I'm, someone reaches out to me um, looking for advice that through that conversation, just to leave the, the, the details aside, this is a mature believer, and I got to a place with them where sin was evident, and I commanded them to repent. And it was a peculiar conversation, because it is as if they had never heard the command to repent. And this, like I said, this was a mature believer, and it just so struck my heart, just thinking about that conversation, the little bit of tension that came from it. That we all need to hear that command. It's not something that's sort of out there, maybe for the really religious, or something that's out there for others to do. This is the place where we meet the Lord. You see, we ask for forgiveness of sin unto life. And I believe that there's certain circles and certain places where it's said that's enough. It is not. It is not. It is those who recognize their sin and see how it is an absolute abomination to a holy God. And when we see that aright, we are commanded to turn from that sin. We're commanded to turn from our thinking, from our ways, and believe what God has said. Right here, through His Word. He gives us everything we need for life and peace and understanding. And it is our direction, doing our will in our unselfish and in our selfish and unrighteous ways that breaks relationship both with God and with our neighbor. So, repent. We as children of God have the privilege of coming before our Father in Heaven. You know, like some of these choruses which are just so awesome this morning. You know, we're flawless through the cross. But that's our standing before the Father. We are walking on this spinning dirt ball every day of our life. And the call of God is to turn from your ways and believe me. Turn from your ways and follow mine. And that's a privilege. If you hear his voice, it's different. It's not the world. This world is dying. This world is, is ripping itself apart. And it is only the truth of God that will set the stage, the field to be level for all men. You see, foolish men believe the world. But we believe God. God said that He made man in His image, male and female. That's the difference. In Christ and in the created order of God, there is no black, red, yellow, or green. So take that message to the world. It's true. We are made and cast in the image of God. And that's the privilege of a message that we have that brings peace and unity to a world that's ripping itself apart. So brothers and sisters, join your hearts with me in prayer to a holy and righteous God. So, Father in heaven, what a privilege it is we have, Lord, that our hearts are drawn to you in such a way that we would gather here this morning. And, Lord, that shows something. It reveals something of what we believe to be true about you. 
Lord, to come here, Lord, you will be challenged in your sin. You'll be challenged to repent. You'll be challenged here, Lord, to turn from your ways and to believe you, the Lord of glory. So, Lord, there's something stirring in every soul here this morning. And, Lord, I pray that you would awaken it fully into a greater measure in every single one of us this morning, Lord, that we would put our ways down. Lord, that we would turn from what we believe is righteous. And, Lord, to believe what you have said firmly in your word of what it is, what is to do right in your eyes alone. So, Lord, that's a privilege. Lord, we have this privilege of hearing our Creator's voice. We have the privilege of coming together, Lord, with great joy of the great hope that there is a resurrection from the dead and we will be on the right hand of the Lord God Almighty on that day. For all will be resurrected. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we hear your voice. We thank you that your mercies are flowing Lord, and we can be part of that. We can receive that. We can obey that. We can turn from ourselves, Lord, that has broken relationships in our own life. Lord, for our own good, cause us to do so. Cause us to hear your voice and to obey. Lord, for it is your word that is pure truth. It is your word that is righteous, holy, and good. So, Lord, come upon us in power this morning, Lord, by the power of your Spirit. May we receive your word, Lord, and be glad doers of it, Lord. And, Lord, it is a privilege. It is a privilege, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we would see ourselves aright, Lord, for none of our hands are clean. Lord, as we walk this earth, Lord, we still will struggle, Lord. It is still sin that's our enemy. The enemy is uh, taunting us and trying to trick us into that sin. But Lord, by your word, by your truth, and by your spirit, we can, we have the power to resist. So Lord, well up in us this great appreciation of your mercy and grace. Well up in us the power of the gospel that causes us to believe what you have said is true. And well up in us the ability to defend with your glory, the wickedness that comes our way, Lord, and make us makers and, and speakers of peace into a lost and dying world. Lord, bless your people this morning, Lord, and may your word affect our souls that we would be changed. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I have the privilege of reading you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be Psalm 23. The glorious Psalm of David. So many of us have heard this psalm. We know this psalm. We love this psalm. So brothers and sisters, if you would please rise for the reading of God's Word. and he leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table bef before me in the sight of my enemies. Thou dost anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Doubtless kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall remain in the house of the Lord forever. May God bless the reading of his word to your soul. You may be seated.
Amen. The familiar Psalm 23, um, which uh, we'll be looking at that this morning in particular, <clears throat> verse 6. Surely goodness, kindness, loving kindness, mercy, depending on the translation, all meaning the same thing, the goodness, the kindness, the mercy, the love of God will follow us all the days of our lives and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we're continuing in this series of messages looking at knowing and delighting in the one true God. And the reason for that is because we need to know our God better. We need to know more fully who we are in the light of His glorious presence. And we need it to affect us more and more down into the depths uh, of our being, affect us on a daily, daily basis. So, we've seen that Jesus is immutable, unchanging. We've seen that God is omniscient, un all-knowing. We've seen that God is omnipresent, ever-present. Last week we saw uh, His omnipotence, all-powerful. And this morning the title is uh, a Heavenly Tailgater. The central idea is God is good from verse 6. And because God is so good, and Cheryl gave a good illustration of that in the beginning, um, we see that there's the certainty of God's blessings today. And there's the continuance of God's blessing tomorrow. So that means you are, if you're a believer in Christ, you're covered, right? All the way to glory. You're covered. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for um, the beauty of this uh, word here this morning in the Psalm 23, and that you are our shepherd, and that your goodness and loving kindness and mercy and favor follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, we pray that that would be uh, etched deeper into our souls here this morning and have a uh, profound changing effect upon us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so <clears throat> I'm going to start with verse 6 and then kind of work back a little bit. Um, because God is so good, the true believer has the certainty of God's blessing today. And, and, I, and I think if I were to say that there's one thing about... Um, the Christian life, in spite of all the bumps, in spite of all the bruises, and in spite of all the struggle, and in spite of the struggle still with sin and, and the flesh that <clears throat> we see all too often um, in our lives, the fact that we are being perfected and we are being made more like Christ is glorious and the promise of His presence. That's right. This, this, this first truth, the certainty of God's blessing today, is wrapped around His um, omnipresence, that He's with us always, even to the end of the age, that He's with us today, um, and that His presence indwells us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Probably, maybe, for me, is the greatest blessing and aspect of, uh, of being a child of God, knowing that I'm not alone. And when I run into problems, and when I run into difficulties, in my Christian life and my Christian walk, like you do, I forget, or I don't act like he's with me, right? And the flesh takes over, but the blessing of his presence, his blessing today, every day. Surely, verse 6 says, surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. So this is David, hunted down by enemies, hunted down by Saul, who wanted to kill him, right? You know that. And his own flesh and blood, Absalom, who wanted to take over uh, his kingdom. He says here, do you see what followed David all the days of his life? God's goodness and God's loving kindness. Same thing that follows after you and I all the days of our life. Do you see that, church? Do you see God's, or rather, do you see David's recognition of the Lord's goodness and the Lord's loving kindness in his life? You recognize that. And brothers and sisters, we too need to have an increased sense, an increased awareness, an increased appreciation for His presence in our life, for the certainty of His blessing and His presence being with us today and how that ought to affect us in a greater way and in a greater measure than it does presently at times. 
He says, surely. So not maybe, not possibly, you know, God's goodness and loving kindness will be with you today. It's a definite. The word goodness there means that which is favorable, that which is beneficial. Loving kindness could be translated mercy or kindness. And you see there in the verse where that goodness and loving kindness is. It's following us. It's like behind us. But when it says follow, it means like to run after. Where it says follow, it means like a hostile, almost like a hostile. It's not hostile, it's his, his goodness. But it's almost like when your enemy is chasing after you, you know, with hostility to kill you. That's kind of the, like if you were being in pursuit of somebody that wanted to do you harm. That kind of intense pursuit. Uh, hunt down. Uh, to chase after. Uh, <clears throat> to be right behind someone. Right behind someone. There was an illustration, I think I shared this before. Actually it was um, Ironside. Um, was he a preacher? I think he was a preacher and he has commentaries. But he, he, he met with this lady who was struggling in a counseling kind of sense with um, someone that wanted to do her harm. And I actually knew somebody a few years ago here, quite a few years ago here in this church. The poor woman, she was suffering some mental illness. It wasn't a member of the church, it was a friend of the church. And she was suffering some kind of mental issue. She had a traumatic experience in her life, and it left her with, there was actually somebody that was after her trying to kill her. And she would say, all kinds of things, how this man was after her, trying to kill her. He'd be flying in a, on a plane and shooting down some kind of beams into her house or into her car, causing her to have like electric shocks. And this man, this, this person that she had an encounter with, it was a real person, was out to just kill her. And she was in and out of different facilities. And we used to go and visit her and try to help her. And we'd be like, when we were there with her, talking with her, none of this was happening to her. But you could not tell her that this maybe really wasn't truly happening. You just couldn't. It was sort of like the movie, The Beautiful Mind. Maybe you saw that movie. It was sort of like that. And um, I don't even actually know what happened to that woman. But I'm morphing two stories. Ironside was talking to a woman like that. And he goes, oh, I know who's following you here. Read Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely God's goodness and God's loving kindness is following you all the days of your life and you will be dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. And the story in that account was that helped that woman um, not to be afraid. All the days of my life, literally following me, his goodness and mercy will pursue me and run after me and chase me. It's a wonderful thought. And see, it's such a wonderful thought. So listen here, church, listen. Some pastors, some preachers, you know, listen to your pastor, okay? Listen to your pastor. God's goodness and God's loving kindness is pursuing you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's great and that's glorious. Then the one whom God is seeking after to save, the one who God is wooing and drawing to himself, the one who is not, a yet, not yet a believer in Christ, we, we say, God's goodness and loving kindness is pursuing them as well, and they don't know it yet. <laughs> okay? And he does things in their life, and he puts them in situations, and he puts them in circumstances, and he takes them out of this situation, or out of this day, and his love is pursuing them, and until their heart is truly, truly touched by him, they're like this. They're like this. I don't want it. I don't want it. I will reject it. But the one whom the Lord is truly saving and the one whom the Lord is truly making his own, it's called invincible love will win them over. Irresistible grace will draw them. That's the extent of God's love and kindness on those whom he is saving. So we got his loving kindness and his, pursuing, and his mercy pursuing those who belong to him and his loving kindness and his mercy really going after those whom he is um, saving and drawing to himself in one day for the not yet believer whom God is saving one day they will understand and they will come to Christ and they will turn to him in repentance and faith to be saved one day they will because those whom God has saved will be saved that's what the Bible says 
So a wonderful thought here. God's goodness is right on my heels. All the days of my life. Not just some of the days. So all the days of my life. So for a young people, <laughs> a sister in the church calls them pint-sized people. So for pint-sized people, God's love and kindness and mercy is pursuing you. And it will pursue you. Right? And God's grace and mercy on those that are belong to him will be with them all the days of their life. So pint-sized people, teenage people, young adults, God's grace, God's mercy, God's loving kindness will follow you all the days of your life. You will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Middle-aged people, people in their prime, people past their prime, God's goodness and God's loving kindness will follow you all the days of your life. That's every day, 24-7, even though there's times when we don't feel it. Okay? So aren't you glad, church, aren't you glad that God's goodness, like God doesn't turn goodness on, like we really kind of feel God's goodness and loving kindness right now, like when we're sitting here and we're in worship and we're in prayer and we're hearing the word and, you know, we feel maybe God's goodness and God's loving kindness. Aren't you glad he doesn't turn it on on Sunday and turn it off on Monday? Aren't you glad he doesn't turn his mercy on on Tuesday and turn it off on Wednesday? Because God is good. Because God is so good, and He's so good all the time, a believer has the certainty of God's blessing today. And that's wrapped around that attribute, omnipresent. He is with us always, even to the end of the age. So because God is so good, we got the certainty of God's blessing today and the continuance of God's blessing tomorrow. And I will dwell in the house of of the Lord forever. Do you see that, church? David now speaks of the continuance of the blessings of God, of the Lord's presence in his life. So David enjoyed God's loving kindness. David enjoyed God's goodness in the present. Now, in the present, because that's all we're in right now, we're in the present, right? But he looked forward to experience God's goodness. You know, the Bible says it was a release to God's grace. He has poured out his grace on his church, and he has poured out his grace on believers, it says in Ephesians, and he loves to lavish his grace, his unmerited favor on us. And he's lavishing it on us even today, and then he's going to lavish his grace on us for all eternity, is what the Bible says. The continuance of God's blessing tomorrow. Right? So David served in that God's blessings the blessing of his presence, that's his blessing. The blessing of his presence would, accom would accompany him forever. So that's a wonderful promise. These are like dual promises. These are, this is like a dual promise. I was almost going to entitle that, Two Wonderful Promises for God, from God. But surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. That's a promise. His loving kindness and his goodness will follow me, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Actually, I've seen those two promises. There's at least three there. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And, you see that in verse 6? And, little word and, and, and why is that word so important in our text here? Because that word connects our todays with our tomorrows. Amen. That word and connects the present with the future. And then with all eternity and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So for David, and it's Psalm 34, 8, I don't know if I have it somewhere in here, I was going to read it, if I, if I didn't, I should have had Taste and see that the Lord is good. I think that's first Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see the kind. Taste and see. You get a taste. That not yet believer, that one whom God is drawing, that one whom God is wooing, that one whom God is pursuing, and you're rejecting it still, and rejecting it still, and fighting it still, and the world's allurements just are too much for you. You, you, you enjoy them too much. Once you taste, really do taste the kindness of God. Taste and see the kindness of God. Then you're drawn to Him. And I've used this illustration before. And it reminds me of when I took my daughter, Erica, who's 24 years old today, um, to the ice cream store. You've heard me say this before. I took her brother and her, her to the ice cream store when they first came into our home. And, um, and they got a tape. It was my cousin's. It was my cousin, my, 
mother's cousin's daughter's store in Seymour. And um, they were really gracious. Eric and, uh, and um, Adam were like, so they go, have a taste. They taste this way. Mm. That reminds me of another story that I won't share about someone tasting ice cream for the very first time in their life at Johnny's Dairy Barn over here in Middlebury. And they were taking those a little, he was tasting the ice cream. I don't think he, I don't know if he ever had it before. I put it on his, he's in his little chair. He's in his little car seat chair, it was just me and him. And I'm going, let's go for ice cream. I'm not saying who he is, it's just, and I'm, and I'm putting it on his tongue. He's going, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he goes a little more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of a sudden he was like practically jumping out of his seat for more. And I was like, I couldn't get it, shovel it into his mouth fast enough. But that's a picture of when you taste the kindness of God, you want you're drawn to it. And so Adam and, and Erica were at the place, and after tasting every flavor that there was under the sun, finally had to say to them, okay, well, come on, you gotta pick one. You can't, you know, just taste the whole, every single flavor. So they eventually picked one. David here is expecting ongoing the blessing, the ongoing blessing of fellowship with God dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. It's kind of like this illustration. <laughs> oh boy. God's love, I read somewhere that God is like a, a police car pursuing us. Okay, a lot of times when a police car is pursuing us, it's not for a good reason. We went through a stop sign, we are speeding, but it's like God's love and kindness and grace and mercy is kind of like a police car. So we got a police car pursuing us to do good to us. Okay. And actually when they pull us over because we're speeding or we're going through a stop sign, it is for our good. They're trying to help us to learn to slow down and not get into an accident or hurt somebody else, right? We may think that they're trying to pull us over to give us a ticket, but in reality, in this illustration, they're chasing you to tell you that you won the lottery. <laughs> and instead of the prize being eight million, eight trillion dollars, it's eternity. The illustration is eternity and fellowship with the Lord, basking in His glory and His mercy forever, enjoying the wonderful glory of His wonderful presence, God's love and kindness and grace and mercy, pursuing us to do good. And some of you, some of us, even as believers in Christ, need to really get that drilled into our head, that God's love and He's pursuing us to do good to us, and not to do harm to us, even when we're disciplined, and even when there's sin, and there's disobedience, it's for our good. And, and he's not out to harm us, he's out to bless us with his presence. And, and a lot of times that comes through deeper obedience to him. So, because God is so good, we got the certainty of his blessing today, we got the promise of his blessing tomorrow, so we're going to work back a little bit and Start thinking about applying this, okay? So the true believer, for the true believer, we can go to the shepherd, our shepherd, for the satisfaction of our souls, for the joy of our souls. The Lord, verse 1, is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I'm just touching on this. I preached on Psalm 23 multiple times, I think, in the time that I've been here. I'm just touching on this now by way of application be a whole beautiful sermon on Psalm 23 on one of the Sundays as the preacher saying or warning, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So Psalm 23 is a psalm of confidence. Again, probably written by David, either when he was hunted down by Saul or more likely Absalom, his son. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, 4, Then David said to all his officials who were with him in Jerusalem, Come, we must flee, or none of us will escape from Absalom. We must leave immediately, or he will move quickly to overtake us and bring ruin upon us and put the city to the sword. The psalm of confidence in David saying, Come up May, I find my satisfaction for my soul in God. It says, I shall not want. God's goodness and loving kindness and mercy, meeting our physical needs, meeting our spiritual needs. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He quiets me beside he leads me beside quiet waters, laughing to myself. I so much need to be led by the Lord to quiet waters. I so much need the Lord to 
quietly down. In fact, I forget what psalm it is. It says, it might be 133. My soul was like a weaned, or 131 or 133. My soul was like a weaned child within me. You know, after a child's weaned off of their mother's milk. And, they're, and so before that, when they're sitting in the mother's lap and they want a bottle, a breast, they're like, Right, they're after it, but after they're weaned, they could just sit there in their mother's lap and, you know, just calmly. I need to be weaned like that. We need to be weaned like that. Be led by the Lord beside quiet waters with our Lord in fellowship with Him. He makes me lie down in weaned pastors. So, a good shepherd has to have skill in pasturing, pasturing his sheep. Because the sheep like to roam around. They'll feed upon rotten grass. They'll drink dirty water. And the shepherd knows the sheep need help. They need more. He knows which ones need more attention. And he leads us, me, it's personal, beside quiet waters. So when sheep are thirsty, they'll, like I said, they'll look for water and they'll drink any water. Filthy water, polluted water. Water with internal parasites in it, dirty water, broken cisterns, as Jeremiah says, Jeremiah two thirteen, I think, broken cisterns that could just hold no water, and that's the that's that's the life of uh, a not yet believer, looking for that joy and satisfaction and stuff of the world, or even believers we are lured into that trap of finding our trying to find joy and satisfaction and contentment in the things of the Lord. David likely was the one who wrote Psalm 73. I mean, try this one on the sides. I, I think about this verse and I go, okay. I really say this. Whom am I in heaven but you? Psalm 73, verse 25. And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. My heart and my flesh may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Down to verse 28. But as for me, the nearness of my God is my good. I made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of your works. So you can say that's the life of a believer, that's the life of the sanctification, growing in Christ likeness more and more to the point where it's like there's nothing more on earth, there's nothing on earth, Lord, that I desire more than you when I'm dead and gone and I'm, I'm going to be with you in glory and in heaven, and it's going to be me in fellowship with you. Nothing I desire. That's a whole other sermon. Nothing I desire. So he restores my soul. How about verses 3 through 5? He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness. Why does he do all this? Why is he the good shepherd? Why does he give God his goodness today and for all, tomorrow and for all eternity? Why? Because it's to make much about you? No. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> no, wrong answer. We know that. It's for his namesake. It says there in verse 3. I tell you, everything tells me it's about me. I used to have my day timer. I don't use that anymore. I got finally weaned off of that. And um, I think that thing used to say, it's all about you. I think that was their slogan. I think that was their... That was their marketing thing. It's all about you. Or have it your way. That's the old one, right? Which one's that? Down the left. Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. Have it your way. I mean, there's all those ads like that. Um, for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. So think about it, Christian. God, you think about that. God restores us. Not only does he go after us, not only is his loving kindness and his mercy and his grace and his goodness following and pursuing us when we stray, right? He goes after us to rescue us, to restore us. How loving is that? Has that ever happened to you? Where, you know, you need the restoration um, of your soul? Or is that happening to you now? We could say it could happen to us on a daily basis. Psalm, read Psalm 32. Read Psalm 51. David's Psalm of, of repentance and contrition and confession. 
for his sin with Bathsheba. You talk about restoring somebody's soul. What's the verses? Psalm 51, 10 through 13. Pray it. Pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast me from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. That's the restoration. Restore. Create. Renew. Don't take your... Don't cast me away from your presence. Don't take your spirit from me in the sense of not losing your salvation. A believer in Christ cannot lose their salvation. But the sense of losing the joy of their salvation. The sense of losing that intimacy um, with the Lord there. Restore to me the joy of my salvation, Lord, and sustain me with the willing spirit. That's the restoration of our soul. Believers, in light of his goodness and kindness and mercy, let's go to our shepherd for the restoration of our souls. All right, not yet believer. There's a few here. There's a few here that have not professed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There may be, certainly there could be some that are watching here that have not. To not yet believer, you know that God's goodness is with you today. Many different verses that we could look at, but I'm going to look at Matthew, we're going to look at Matthew 5. 43 through 45, and in particular verse 45, he says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. And here's the part. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and and the unrighteous, on the righteous. So God's goodness is seen in the life of the unbeliever. They're living here on this earth. They get to see and enjoy the beauty of the New England fall if they live around here. They have a, a, just the, the blessings that go um, with life on this planet, that there's those blessings of, uh, you know, you have a meal. Whatever the, whatever the blessings are, God's goodness is experienced still in those moments. And he's seeking to woo them to himself to save them. God's goodness is with you today in the situation, not yet believer, in the situation that he's placed you in, in the situation that you're in. God's goodness is there, meaning meant to, I'm going to read the verse in a minute, meant to draw you to repentance and faith in his son. Instead of just grinding you to powder, any one of us to powder right now, or pouring out his wrath on us right now. Not yet believers is deserving God's wrath being poured out on them for all eternity. It hasn't happened yet because of his goodness and because of his mercy. So, listen to this, okay? <clears throat> Not yet believer, here's another application. Not yet believer, unsaved person, in light of God's goodness and loving kindness, in light of his blessings, Today, in the extension of his blessings that he wants to pour out on you for all eternity, not yet believer, listen to your pastor. Stop waiting. Stop waiting for the goodness of God to save you. Stop waiting. Lamentations 3, verse 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks for him, it is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. Stop waiting for God's goodness to save you. Because there's a danger in that too. The person that's waiting and God's goodness is extended and God's mercy is extended and they wait and they reject and they hear the message and they reject. There's a big time danger in that and that the heart can get harder and harder and harder and harder to the Lord until you're with the man or woman as I was one day on their deathbed, and they're like, no, I don't want Jesus. No, I don't want him. No. The hardness of the heart there, and being given over to that. So, not yet believer. Stop waiting for God's goodness to save you. Romans 2, verses 4 through 5. Not yet believer. Unsaved person. Do you think lightly or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance 
in patience toward you, not knowing that the kindness of God on you today, kind of paraphrasing, preaching it, and quoting it, is meant to lead you to repentance. That's the purpose of it. Right? As you're still walking around here on this dirt ball, like the brother said, the kindness of God on you today that woke you up today, that you're not dead, you're not burning in hell today. His kindness toward you is designed for that purpose of leading you to repentance. Amen. So why won't you repent? The hardness of heart. It reminds me so much of that sermon, you know, we share that a lot here, where Spurgeon's like, young man, you look miserable. And you are miserable. You look miserable. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Christ. Turn to the cross. Turn to Jesus to be saved today. Isaiah 45, 22. Stop waiting. So I'm right in the middle of the sermon, right, kind of, right? We're in application. There's a couple more applications, and then... We're going to wrap it up, but we're right in the middle of this. But right now, I'm going to ask, stop waiting. If there's somebody here this morning, and they sense God's kindness and mercy, wooing them, drawing them, calling them to himself for salvation, right now, I'm going to say, just stand right up. Just stand right up. Stand up. And by your standing up, acknowledging God's kindness is drawing me. See, that's the sad part right there. Um, per, I'm say person doesn't stand up right now. That's sad. It means God's working, but they're rejecting and they still don't see the goodness and kindness of the Lord. But that's okay, because those whom the Lord has saved, He will save. And those whom the Lord is calling to Himself will be won over by His invincible love and His irresistible grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For he says, At the acceptable time I listened to you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Here's the warning though again. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I can't bear this out in scripture per se, and if somebody can help me with this, you know, hell, eternal separation from God, place of weeping and gnashing of teeth is the torment even greater in one sense for the one in their conscious existence throughout all eternity apart from Jesus Christ is the torment even greater and experiencing the wrath of God's presence on them even stronger when they remember times that they just out and out rejected Christ in an opportunity like right now to be saved. I wonder, but I don't know that anybody would want to go there and find out. All right, a couple more. True believer, now we're back to the true believer. Let's remember God's goodness and loving kindness. And the brother kind of talked about this. In the forgiving of our sins. How great is that? The forgiveness of his sins that we experience today when we recognize, you know, what we've sought and sinned. In. And 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's how you know, again, 1 John was written to, the, to help people to know who was a believer and who wasn't a believer. And there it was right there. That's how you know that God's righteousness is in you, child of God. You confess your sin. And when you are confronted with sin, obvious sin, Blatant sin are not even so obvious. When you're confronted with it, you confess it and you repent of it, giving indication of the fact that the righteousness of Christ has fallen upon you. But just the blessing that we have, no matter how many times, you know, we don't want to sin against the Lord so easily, but no matter how many times that we sin against Him, the blessing of his mercy is being new every day. We probably might preach on that. So forth. And the forgiveness that we have in him. Psalm 25 verse 7 says, Do you remember the sins of my youth? Do not remember. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your loving kindness, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. His goodness. His loving kindness in forgiving us our sin. So many verses. 
Psalm 51, be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Whereas in the scripture he says he takes our sins and removes them from us as far as the east is from the west. As far as the length of the arms of our Savior there hanging on the cross, dying for the sins of his people. And then one guy said to him, Father, forgive me of my sin and remember me when, I come, when you come into your kingdom. The other two were railing, the other two were rejecting, the other two were not repentant. And then the last thing here, let's never forget, so we talk about his goodness, and his, but let's never forget also his loving kindness toward us. So many verses, I picked out a few. Verse 20, Psalm 26, 3. For your loving kindness, imagine this one, I like this when I first read this. Your loving kindness is before my eyes. Oh, I need that. Don't you need that? as you're walking on this planet and living your life, I need to see God's loving kindness. Like, that's thing before me. We got him following us too, but it's, it's like, we got the front and the back, we're like covered. It's like his loving kindness. My eyes beholding as I'm walking through life and I'm walking through situations and I bump into this thing over here that's difficult, or the, whatever the situation is, and, all, and I see God's loving kindness on me. And be careful, because when you go through difficult times, when you go through difficult times, our propensity sometimes is to find the people that will just commiserate with us. Find a person that will help you to see God's loving kindness going before you, right in the midst of whatever it is that you're dealing with. Right? Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. I want to be like Caleb. Caleb? Caleb's here. I want to be like Caleb in the Bible. Lord, I pray that I could be like Caleb in the Bible. Caleb in the Bible, at 85 years of age, Caleb in the Bible, when, um, I think it was when they were entering into the promised land, he said, I feel like I had the strength that I did when I was, or maybe he was thinking about when he led them into the, uh, led them out of the wilderness and into the promised land. Anyway, at 85, he felt like he had the strength of a 40-year-old man as he had another task that was given. Jones is going, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Any one of us, right? The benefits, the blessings of the Lord. He could choose, he could choose to do that. What I like about Caleb is the Bible, and the Bible says Caleb and Joshua, they were different kinds of dudes. The Bible says they had a different kind of spirit about them. A spirit of obedience to the Lord. And that's why they were able to enter into Canaan, the promised land, when the rest wandered around in the wilderness and died in the wilderness. Psalm 117, verse 2, For his loving kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord is everlasting. Praise the Lord. Let's not forget his loving kindness toward us. And then the last one, Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Oh. The Lord appeared to him from afar, saying, check this out, you ready? I have loved you with an everlasting love. Somewhere in here, somewhere in here along the Lord willing, there'll be a, we'll talk about God's love, God is love, one of the attributes, God is love. I've loved you with an everlasting love, neither height nor depth nor nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God and reaching down. How far does it reach down? It reaches down to the depths of hell, to the heights of heaven. I've drawn you. I've wooed you. I'm wanting you to see his goodness. I'm wanting you to see his loving kindness in your life. Not yet believer. I want you to see his loving kindness and his goodness in your life. Believer in Christ so that you'll fall deeper and deeper in love with me and appreciation of me and trust in me. In, in, in living this life in the presence 
until the point where one day, right, you'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've loved you with an everlasting love, therefore I've drawn you with loving kindness. Loving kindness. God draws us with loving kindness. You can think of, if you're a believer, okay, so here's an opportunity. In a minute, if somebody would like to share, because I'm thinking about it really quick right now. If somebody would like to share a testimony, when we're done, which is going to be in a couple of minutes, of how the Lord's loving kindness drew you to himself, and how he did that. Or maybe somebody, don't put the focus on an individual, maybe different people or circumstances, something that, maybe it was someone that God used in your life to draw you, to help you to be saved, to help you to see his loving kindness. God is good. And God's people said, yes, God is so good, Pastor. He's not just good. He's just so good. And he's good all the time. His blessings are on us today. The continuance of his blessings tomorrow. So what difference, the foundational question could be, what difference does the goodness and loving kindness of God have upon my life today? Certainly we know the difference that his goodness and loving kindness will have on us tomorrow in terms of eternity with him. Two more verses, and I'm going to repeat Psalm 23, 6. Two more verses. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from above. In Titus 3, 4 through 5. And while I'm reading this verse, I have my brother John here come and stand here, please. Because this is another invitation. He gave you one in the middle of the sermon. I'm going to give you one more. Not yet believer, unsaved person. Maybe now the Lord has touched your heart, your eyes are open. But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, have you experienced the goodness and loving kindness of the Lord in saving you? And so, as a church and as a people of God, help us, Lord, to grow in that appreciation of that. Help us to grow in our understanding of that. And not yet believer. You sense the kindness and loving kindness of God on your life. Do you see it? And do you recognize your sin and your need to turn to Jesus Christ in repentance and faith today to be saved? If you do, I ask you to come up. I'm going to stand over here. I'll be happy to pray with believers who um, are seeking... Uh, just want to share something or pray, for, pray about God's grace and mercy in their life. Or if somebody wants to come up here and say, Pastor John, I want to give that testimony about God's kindness. You could just do that. But if you're not yet a believer and you've not turned to Jesus Christ today as yet to be saved, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. His kindness and His mercy wooing you, please don't reject You can't reject it. So Lord Jesus, move in our hearts here this morning. You say, surely... God's goodness and loving kindness will um, follow us all the days of our life and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We thank you for that, Lord. Help us as believers to grow in our understanding and appreciation of that. Help us to be uh, just more appreciative of what you've done in your goodness and your loving kindness and your mercy toward us. Lord, if somebody has a testimony toward that end, that they would share that. And Lord, the not yet believer, Pray that your kindness and mercy and goodness, Lord, that is wooing them, that is calling them, that they would today come forward and express their desire to repent and to turn to Jesus Christ for salvation and forgiveness of sin. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And um,